All right. Hey, welcome uh, to the Implied Project, episode number two. Two. Here we go. Two. I'm here with my co-host, Jamie Gaynor. Hello. And we are very excited to have our very first guest on the show, Mr. Gary Bond. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so, Gary, I understand, and, we, and we've got some special guests waiting on the sidelines, some, some uh, lovely ladies that Gary's worked with, so we're going to bring them on here shortly. But... Uh, as you guys that may have listened to our show last week should know that, uh, basically the whole focus of the implied project is to truly focus on, uh, the photographers, the models, even stylists, uh, body paint, anybody involved in the, in the glamor photo industry, we want to really get to know the real stories behind basically the people behind the images. And that's what the whole focus of our show is. And so it's not just a little picture you see on Instagram or, or whatever, you will actually get to know more about the people behind these photos. So Mr. Gary, again, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, you yes. bet. Pleasure to be here. I'm happy to be here. Yes. Now your, your little bio is pretty interesting because I didn't realize, um, cause you kind of called out your age in the, in the bio. So I don't want to say exactly how old you are, but you've been doing this actually for not very long, only a few years, correct? Well, I, I've, I've always owned a camera and a few years ago we decided to start traveling some and I wanted to learn how to use it more. So I started taking landscape photos and doing some things like that. And, and, uh, once my wife and I decided to go to Europe, it's like, Ooh, maybe I want to learn how to use a camera. So my kids got me a nice camera for Christmas that I'm sure I paid for anyway, but nonetheless, like okay. I got a camera. I looked around where I'm from Oklahoma and I looked around to find somebody that I could start learning from. And I was able to hook up with a gentleman by the name of Chuck majors in Oklahoma city. Who's been a photographer for 20 plus years and a good one and enjoys teaching. So I started out, uh, signing up for the Oklahoma City Glamour Photography Club because I got tired of landscapes and I wanted to learn how to edit and people are harder to photo shoot. And, and anyway, Chuck Majors was my first mentor and I've since picked up a couple of more, but I started learning how to use the camera, take it off of auto, in other words, about five and a half years ago. And well, that's pretty spent. impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I've had some great, great teachers, and I'll tell you some of the secrets yeah. along the way. Um, and Anna Fay has got one of the initial secrets that I still operate by. Okay. Uh, but through my business career, I learned, I learned how to. If somebody has something or doing a business program or a plan that you like, you go learn from them. So mm -hmm. I started looking for people mm -hmm. like Chuck that I could go learn from. And, and that's how I got started. And he helped me get off of automatic and we started and I started doing workshops. And anyway, from there on, I just kind of became consumed with it. I do have a little bit of an art background. So the taking the photos is just about half of it for me. The other half, I spend time in post processing and the editing and I'm still mm -hmm. in classes on Photoshop and capture one and things like that. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of a nerd from that perspective, right? But kids are growing. I'm, you know, kids are growing out of the house. Uh, my wife is you know, 43 years has been a great sport through this whole process. She should and, be. Yeah. <laughs> like I did a photo shoot this afternoon, and she yeah. was there at the house, and she was there the whole time. That's so, great. I love now, that. I, I'm curious. How did you segue from landscape? I know you, you, you understand the story about working with Chuck and whatnot, but how'd you get from landscape to like, hey, I want to shoot women now, beautiful women? Like, well, it, it, it wasn't just women. It, it kind of evolved into women or glamour. I still own part of a small company. I still work full time. Mm -hmm. I didn't want a second job. So I keep this as a hobby. Mm -hmm. And I don't shoot that much. I shoot four, maybe six times a month. And I gotta, I've got to fill in the blank there on a shoot day, especially if I'm traveling or out of town shooting. I may shoot two, three, four models in one day. But to me, that's just one shoot day. Mm -hmm. okay. It looks like I shoot more than I do, but I still only shoot four to six times a month. And uh, so how do I get to, to, to pretty girls? Well, 
I was looking around at the photographers and I knew I didn't want to do family photos or weddings or senior pictures or I, I didn't want to do that part and be tied to a, a schedule, a deadline. Mm -hmm. And so what's wrong with pretty girls? You know, I, it, it was kind of an evolution. So that's when I saw the Glamour Photography Club of Oklahoma City run by Chuck Majors. And so I said, sign me up. So like uh, Oklahoma City, is that where you're from? I live just north of Oklahoma City, about an hour in a smaller town, uh, Stillwater, Oklahoma. It's not a secret. It's on my several things, but uh, about an hour north of Oklahoma City and about an hour west of Tulsa. I was going to ask where the accent was from. <laughs> I've been in the South most of my life, Oklahoma and Texas, mostly. Uh, my did, family's we, Southern. So, yeah, I was I was hearing it. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. did 20 years in Colorado. My wife is from Colorado. So we were there 20 years and we came back to Oklahoma about 22 years ago. Okay. The kids here in Oklahoma. And so, like I said, they're out of the house. And I got a house and uh, lots of stuff, lots of places to shoot. I love to hear... Um, when you said that you'll do like four to six shoots a month, because I would never, you're right, I would never have guessed that. I, when I was scrolling through your page, you do have a ton of content. So if you shoot that many, that many models per day, and then you, I mean, you would have a whole couple months worth of work out of just those shoots. That fascinates me though, because I would have assumed that you were doing this full time. I, I, my wife and I talk about everything on my schedule. In other words, we both, mm -hmm. She has a small business too. And so we both clear schedules with each other, but we still have Tuesday nights, date night, uh, Saturday mornings, mm. breakfast day. <laughs> we still do that. I mean, we've been married 43 years, so we're not going to separate that part of it now. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. The shoot time is not where I spend most of my time. It's in the post-processing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, to have that many photos, we did a, couple of weekends ago there were four models and three photographers that in my backyard shooting around the pool so i love that i've got several hundred photos of four models and so there's a lot of content to edit there mm -hmm. yeah and, and process and get the proofs out and then start going through and then there's an occasional publication that comes in um and, and all of a sudden they say hey we're short on content because of COVID. Do you have mm -hmm. a set finished? And I may or may not, I may have two or three photos. Um, I mean, I've got a, I've got a, a cover coming out in Playboy any day now that was a, mm -hmm. I need it. I need it set. Wow. So I had it finished. And so they, here we go. Well, that's not too shabby for just picking up a hobby. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> It's, it's the art side of it. I spend yeah. a, one or two times a month. I spend at least three hours in class with another one of my mentors, Nino Batista. If mm -hmm. either one of you know him. Yeah. Nino, Nino, yes. yeah. Nino, Nino, I lean on him pretty hard for the post-processing part. And he, he comes through and, and I've been with Nino long enough. I'll message him and say, Nino, this, I need to figure out how to do this. And once I get two or three items and we'll book a session and he'll spend two or three hours with me one-on-one. -on -one, and I still do that regularly. Uh, so, and nice. I, I, most of my time is not shooting as much as it is editing. Uh, we're going to bring on some of the ladies you've worked with, but before we bring them on, what piece of it, obviously you're still relatively new compared to a lot of people. Um, what would be, but your, but your work is outstanding. Obviously that's why we invited yeah. you. Um, you as far as a piece of advice you would give to someone who's in your shoes from five years ago now, what would you tell them? Hey, this is what you should be doing. You know, the, uh, like some pieces of advice. I, mean, I don't want to necessarily talk equipment because I know there are Nikon people out there. There are Canon people, there's Sony people. There's, there's all kinds of good equipment out there, but, my biggest my biggest piece of advice is go find somebody whose work you like mm -hmm. and approach them, reach out to them, contact them. Most of these guys are really friendly and willing to help. Some of them are in the teaching business like yeah. Nino Batista is, like Chuck Majors is, uh, 
one of the other my mentors is out of, of out of Los Angeles. He's not so much of a teacher as he is one of my big sounding board, and that's Milan von Bruin, who's uh-huh. world renowned erotic photographer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I message Milan all the time, and we're trading ideas. And well, how did you do this, or how did you do that? I've constantly. It's the nerd side of me. I want to know how. How do we? How did you get that finished color palette in a photo? Because it didn't look like that in camera. Because you showed me the back of the camera. How did you get from A to B? Why did you do that? Why? I still ask a lot of questions, and I ask them of people whose work I respect. And if I could be like them, I would be more like them. And so I, I try to put all that together. Find somebody who's willing to teach and go learn from them. That, that's what I've yeah. done. And I, I devoured a lot of that stuff. Just like I said, because my kids are out of the house and that's a lot of my evenings. This this is really enlightening to me because when so I'm um, I've been doing this for like fifteen plus years and when I first started so my uh, time for getting in photographers were like each other um, there was no sharing there was no like everyone was in competition with each other I met a couple people that were friendly but it was not it was not like that for a while so it's really nice to hear that I know. I feel like things have definitely changed all, all across the board. I know tons of photographers that are friends and help each other with lighting and, you know, they hold the, um, the reflector for each other and do all kinds of stuff with background information, but it wasn't always like that. So I love to hear that you're, these guys are, are willing to share and you're willing to share with them. I think that's, I think that's a, a really great, well, uh, that's, that's great information for this. One of the things is that I was not afraid to invest in me. Mm-hmm. So I attended a lot of workshops that you paid to attend. Yeah. And I looked for photographers whose work I like and respected and respected their accomplishments. And I attended from, you know, various places, you know, in Texas and Las Vegas and California. Uh, I haven't gone to Florida to a class yet, but I'm headed that way. I, I paid for my you know, I, for time yeah. to meet these people yeah. and from them, you know, like with Nino, I was a, just one of the little beginners in one of his first workshops he did in Oklahoma and I continued to follow him. And then all of a sudden fast forward four years and he's going, Hey, can we do a workshop at your place? Sure. Come on. And all of a sudden I've got him doing workshops at my house. And, and so I still learn from him all the time. You know, I, that's and, great. So hmm. you, you have to go build a relationship and then reach out to these people. And and yeah, I paid my way, so to speak, in, in attending the workshops, supporting other people. And I still recommend that to anybody. Go, yeah. people. Say, well, why don't you come teach? It's like, nope. I'll go. I'll sign up and pay and go, and I'll talk a lot. <laughs> but I don't classify myself as a teacher. Because you asked me the technical terms, and I might not get it right. I see. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's go ahead and bring on some of the ladies you've worked with and yes, then get their side of the story of their experience with you. So first of all, uh, this is the Victoria Lauren. Hello. Hello. Then we have Yanya. Uh, Hello. And Hi. then we have a pair of ladies. We have Anna Faye and Becca de Villiers. Hello. Hello. All right. So, ladies, uh, I'm going to start with uh, Zianya first. Um, um, tell us about how you met Gary and your experience with him. Okay, sure. So, I actually followed Gary for a really long time. Uh, I only started doing this, I think, January timeframe of this year. So, what I did first was like follow a lot of people, like he said, that you admire. Um, I started with models and photographers, and I imagined like what it would be like to shoot with them one day. Um, and then fast forward to maybe eight months after I started following him, uh, I think I liked a bunch of his pictures, like flooded, possibly flooded his notifications with uh, all the pictures I liked. <laughs> and, and then he messaged me uh, and told me he was coming to Austin and just asked if I would like to shoot. Like it was, I was like, wait, me? Okay, sure, let's do it. And 
the way that I imagined him was like a super, um, I don't know, like super professional, prim proper Thai kind of person. But then like I met him and he's just like how he's sitting here now, like cool. super chill, super friendly. Um, like he was, it's just, it was like going to hang out with a friend to do a photo shoot, you know? So like from the mm -hmm. get go, he was super cool. Um, on Instagram, in person, just like hanging out with somebody. And he has the thing where even though he says he's not a teacher, um, I've learned a lot from him. And he just like hands out all the best advice. So he's a teacher. So yeah, that's it was that's how it was for me. I don't know if I teach. I, I do. You have to admit I do talk a lot the whole you time. You do. <laughs> you do, but you have very informational pieces to say. <laughs> And I'll tell them, this is nerdy, you don't care, but I'll say it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and Victoria, your your story of, uh, about meeting Gary? Oh, God, where do I start? Um, so Victoria was, at that same, Victoria was at that same first glamour shoot I attended. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh. And uh, Chuck Majors is actually my significant other, so um, oh, okay. so that's where the history comes and starts okay. there. Um um, and of course, Amy was one of the first ones there, and we both kind of grandfathered, you know, Gary into this. So Very that's kind of, yeah, it's, it feels like, I don't know, ages. So it, he feels like a, just a very good friend to me. So yeah. just knowing and uh, the history behind this and seeing him grow has just been a really refreshing thing. Um, but Gary invites me to over to his house. We invite, we go, you know, and do shoots. He comes to glam camp, which is one of our things that we host. And uh, he's been coming to that since we started it. Right. Is that right? I've been, I've been, been there. Yeah. I think I've been there every time since it was officially glam camp. Yeah. 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 So, and then I don't know if you ever went to one of the prior ones, uh, David Fish's workshop or any of that, but. Um, I have not looked for that yet. No. Okay. Well, that that's that's been long past. So that's been uh, ages ago. But mm -hmm. we've been definitely we've we have history together. So as far as uh, shooting a long time. So. And Chuck Chuck would host people like Nino in, and I would attend the workshop yes. that, that Nino and Chuck put on, and that's what I'm saying. I invested in me going to with Chuck with Nino people like that, that whose work I respect. So I wasn't afraid to do that. Some people don't want to go to the workshop because oh, it costs a little bit of money. Well, yeah, it does, but save up for it if that's a challenge. I, I always believe yeah. in that whole philosophy where you you invest in yourself, and I do that. You know, whenever I first started, I always invested in um, photography, you know, and photo shoots. So mm -hmm. I feel like that's such a big step in your career. Um, so I always, I always encourage models, even, you know, sometimes I get a little stale and I'm like, okay, I need some refreshers. So I always ask models, what are, what are they doing to mix things up? And um, it's always nice to see Gary, you know, throw in something that's a little bit, you know, creative and he likes to push me a little bit as well. And he's actually giving me tips where I've, I'm like, or like I've winged my eyeliner too much or something like that. And I'm like, oh shit, was I really doing that? Or, you know. <laughs> Right. She so I've changed it up. Uh, what was that? You know, uh, <laughs> she probably taught me that to start with. She just <laughs> nice. We're always teaching each other things, so it's it's cool. And you guys are you guys you two live in the same area, yes? Um, I live in Oklahoma City, more area, okay. and that's about probably what an hour and twenty minutes away. Yeah, still water. But that's interesting yeah. to know. So I'm from Pittsburgh. Um. And it's interesting to know, though, that even in just about any area, there's a there's like a huge creative group, no matter where you go. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I, I believe don't, it. I, yeah, I don't know that that ex I, I, it might have existed before um, Instagram was a thing. I, I assume that it did and then it just got bigger. But that's fascinating to know that any you could plop yourself anywhere and find a really awesome creative group just about oh, anywhere yeah. you go. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. And Absolutely. Anna, that yeah. guy. Your story. Um, so I will just say 15 plus years ago, I started modeling. Um, I really got into group shoots. I worked with different groups where you would come in and, 
and take on, you know, three or four photographers for a certain amount of time and then switch. Um, and mm -hmm. it was all new photographers. So yeah, Gary ended up in one of those groups and I, I was actually your first model. First glamour model I ever photographed was yeah. Anna. Second was Victoria. I yeah. was that okay. order. Those were my first two girls to photo shoot in a studio in a glamour setting. Right. Uh, but Gary was one of the rare photographers that um, actually investigated after we had left. He, one, sent me the picture, which I didn't always get in large group settings mm -hmm. because it's new people. You don't always get yeah. your work back, which is fine. Uh, they're there mm -hmm. for learning experiences. However, Gary would go as far as to send me the pictures, ask me what I thought of them. Um, and I mean, he actually wanted to hear my advice. Um, and I was honest. I was brutally honest. Like he wasn't Gary. He wasn't the Gary Bond that he is today for sure. But he definitely got there very quickly, very quickly. And it's because he was so investigative like he is now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. my, my second shoot after the first one where, where Anna and Victoria were there, I shot with Victoria one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. We were shooting outside and I will never forget this. I'm so scared. I'm so worried about my camera setting. Because remember, I just took it off of auto. Mm -hmm. And I still, anyway, I'm, I'm nervous and I'm, shooting and, and breaking the cardinal rule, taking a picture, looking at the back of my camera, taking a picture. I saw, she finally just stopped, Victoria finally just stopped and put her hands on her hips. She says, if you don't start talking to me and tell me what you want to say and whether or not I'm doing what you want to, I'm just going to shut down. And I kind of went, whoa. And so that kind of opened my eyes. And, and now maybe I've gone the other way because I talk constantly during the shoot. You know, now, and, that's, that's awesome because, I mean, in my experience as well, just you want that kind of feedback from a model. You don't want a, a little cutout just doing what you tell her to do. You want feedback from them too. That's I applaud you for that. Yeah. <laughs> no, she she just flat stopped and put her hands on her hips and said, "If you don't start talking to me, I'm shutting down. I'm done." Because yeah. I have no I idea what I, I'm doing. What you want? And for that, that's I'm so grateful. You know, and Anna that, told I mean, me that's that. how that's how model works. A model's yeah. got to know what she's doing. Right, yeah. it's true. And Anna at the first shoot, one of the things she stayed with, said to me that stayed with me, like Victoria's advice, Gary, work with the girls that are going to help you look good or make you look good. You know, and so I thought, you know, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like today, I refer to it as cheating, but it. Mm -hmm. it it does make a difference to help to start with the, look at all the girls on the screen. They're beautiful girls. Start there. That's the second piece of advice. <laughs> that right. is good. You, uh, yeah. If you, if you have someone that knows their angles, knows how to pose, especially if you're first starting out, if you don't have to instruct someone, it's so much easier if they're comfortable in front of a camera. That's why I applaud these, these women. And 15 years ago, really? That was when you first started? Oh my God. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> she, she I was thought I, yeah, I'm definitely the oldest. Plus, I'm not going to give you an, <laughs> I'm not going to give you an exact number. We're going to stick with 15 plus though. <laughs> All right. Same go. here, but there's no way. That, you look great. Whatever you say. <laughs> you must have started when you were like 10 then. But okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you as well. <laughs> All right, Becca, we haven't heard your story. Um, I met Gary a little over a year ago. We met at one of Nino Batista's group shots that was actually being hosted at Gary's house. Um, and I remember I came down in a red bikini and he looked at me and he said, I'm shooting you. <laughs> and I was like, all right, let's go. And then after that, we, we became really close and kind of what everyone else has said, it's very, um, it's very, he's a good friend as well as a good mm -hmm. photographer. Mm -hmm. So it's very comfortable to shoot with him, especially in our line of modeling. You have to be with someone who's comfortable and professional and respectful. And Gary's always that. Super um, trustworthy. That's rare. Right? And so, yep. yeah. And we've we've been shooting very regularly ever since that shoot about a year ago. Um, we, well, we, I, I saw her the first day at Nino's and I said, we're shooting. And we pulled, what, one or two covers out of that first shoot? We yeah. did. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she did well. 
Uh, both I was, of you, yeah, in St. Catherine Street. I've been modeling for quite a long time. So I had I had pre previous experience, but I hadn't been modeling in a few years. I'd taken a break. Um, and that was my first time shooting again. And Gary's work along with a few other people's really revitalized my model. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Great jump start. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, speaking for the, the model side of this too, hearing that you all like consider Gary a friend, I think that's, uh, that's so important. Um, have you noticed that like the guys that you, the photographers that you view like that are the people you get the best work with right. on top of that? You know what Absolutely. I mean? Like if you're comfortable, yeah. wow. you'll shoot with that person. I, my, the photographers that I've become friends with are the people that I shoot with regularly and I get the absolute best photos with. Right. It, yeah. It's so important to be that comfortable with each other. So that's right. amazing. Yeah. yeah, you can see it in the body language and the face if the girl's comfortable yeah. or not. Um, yeah, I shoot things with Gary. I would definitely not shoot with. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a couple photographers like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, because I trust him. Yeah, and everything. you know what? Most of those photographers that I'm speaking about are ma happily married as well. Yeah, right. I feel like there there might be a misconception. Um, on right. some of that for people who, who aren't in this business and the ones that I that I'm most comfortable with have wives that I've met I've had dinner with um, right. are sometimes present on shoots and I think people's heads are like wait what right and I'm like yeah, yeah that's we're like family right mm -hmm. uh, and on that note Gary Bond's wife Sheila uh -huh. we all have met Sheila and we all know yes. how wonderful and she is definitely Gary's better half <laughs> she is just as tentative kind caring trustworthy and that just makes it all the better the yeah. two of them yeah i think that's they all know mama bond that's right <laughs> that's just a reflection of it goes back towards uh on a com completely separate from photography when you have that kind of relation relationship with someone where the trust and the communication is there okay. then that obviously is going to translate to what you're doing now you know, shooting these models because it's it's that trust and communication. Right. Uh, it's just it's just a, a universal thing. Mm -hmm. I think I put in my my bio notes that I was a little concerned about entering this arena at my age. Right. Mm -hmm. But it actually has worked out to my advantage now that some of these girls have shot with me and and realize you know I'm just me and and I'm I'm in it. Yeah, I, I'm in it. I want to be able to say friend. You know, one of these days mm -hmm. when I decide to go do something else, I still want to be able to say friend to every one of these moms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and important. It is. They all, like I yeah. said, they all know Mama Bond. Even, mm -hmm. even Janya that that is in Austin, Texas. That's the first thing I think you met Sheila as you came in the first time we shoot. Mm -hmm. yeah, didn't yeah. you? It was awesome. Yeah. She was hmm. super. Well, fun. I want to bring up Janya as a special case because. Obviously, you met the other ladies through the uh, the model camps, but yeah. uh, going back to that trust thing, because I know Zanya, if it was okay for me to bring it up as far as like the, some of the issues that you had about modeling and how Gary helped you with that. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think for me, like there's actually tons of issues to start with, <laughs> but um for me the main ones were not being super experienced um and also i feel like i entered this whole thing at a pretty late age um i'm 30 and i have never done this before and then uh, on top of that i have kids so and they're little they're mm -hmm. eight and ten so for me it was there was like a bunch of things that i didn't realize were gonna matter when i started um yeah and for me you know it's well, and I'm, I'm married too, so that was another thing. Um, everybody does, like she said, they, they, everyone has a wrong idea of what this is. Like, they mm -hmm. think that the photographer is just a guy with camera who's trying mm -hmm. to like shoot pictures of, you know, like hot chicks for himself. And, and so there's a lot of fear, I think, for some partners at first um, mm -hmm. when they've never been to a shoot or anything. And they're like, oh, well, like he's going to see me naked or he's going to see what, like what you're going to do what in front of them. And you're <laughs> like, I'm just posing. And they're like naked though. Like, <laughs> um, so, yeah. so, and then they, and it, then they see the shoots like this and they're like, wait, never mind. I don't have anything to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> so my husband had the opportunity to, to meet Gary on our second shoot. 
and he was like, dude, he is super fucking chill. I'm sorry. He's super freaking chill. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'm taking her off the broadcast here. <laughs> but she nailed it. No, you, you can say whatever you want. We're good. We're good. My cheeks are my cheeks are hot now. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, but I mean, they. So our shoot, like like he said, whenever he comes, he'll schedule multiple models, and we all have time slots. And I, for one, don't like to go over anybody's time slot. So, my husband met Gary, and they were talking so much, like so much at the beginning. And I was like, okay, maybe if we get thirty minutes out of this, like I'm good. <laughs> So he was just super cool from the start. My my husband wouldn't stop talking about Gary Bond. And then my husband's a pilot and Gary was sending pictures of his plane for me to show my husband. So it was just like instant friendship, you know? Um, yeah. So that was something that really helped me. Um, but then, of course, there's other another thing for me was that I have, you know, two kids and I have stretch marks. And the whole entire world, like, falls apart whenever there's a chick with stretch marks on pictures. Um, so for me, I was I, I was very honest with him at first. I told him that there's been photographers who have been like, I have to like edit them because like people have to see a certain thing. And I'm like, okay, I'm good, do it, you know? So I learned very early on that people want a very specific look on their portfolio or like on their menu per se. That's what I, that's how I view it when I view a photographer is I, I view them yeah. as, like Gary is like, the in and out guy, you know, no matter what you pick on the menu, it's going to be like a super dope thing to get. Like that's, that's Gary to me. It just, you, you don't have to go crazy, super creative. You can just show up with like your cutest outfit and Gary's going to make you look freaking hot. Like that's just, it's fact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so thank you, Gary. But, um, but I didn't always know that. Um, and I didn't know that photographers could do that with you. So I told them, you know, like I have stretch marks and people like to edit them. And he was like, don't worry about it. I'm just going to photograph you the way I see you. Like you just be you. This is what I'm seeing. And then you'll see what I see when I'm, when I'm done with the photos and nobody had ever put it that way before. Um, so now it's like, now it's like, if anyone says anything, I'm like, listen, I shot with Gary freaking bond and he's good with this. So like you be good with this. Yep. So he, he definitely, <laughs> he definitely helped me um, grow in that way. Um, so thank you. In case you didn't know any of this, yeah, You're that's welcome. more than just a photography and modeling thing. That's yeah, a absolutely. that's a self esteem and personal thing. That's beautiful. Yeah. What do you got to say, Gary? One of the other mentors you haven't brought up, a guy by the name of Don Hale in Denver. Mm -hmm. Okay. I heard him say something one time, and it stuck with me. He said, "You know, your job as a photographer is for the model to feel." better about herself when she leaves and for when she comes yeah. in. He goes, I don't care what your photos look like, but it's your job to make them feel, and there are beautiful girls, and I'm not saying, I'm not lying to them, mm -hmm. but it's all part of the edification process and building them to the point where they're comfortable and feel good about what they're shooting. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy that part of the edification process. And, and it's a positive thing. It's not a negative thing. Um, uh, it's something that I heard early on once again, and I, I subscribe to it and I yeah. enjoy the edification process. I love that. And you do feel good. At least for me, I can say that once I leave the shoe, I'm like, God, that was awesome. Um, okay. there, it hasn't always worked that way, even with other photographers where mm -hmm. you walk out, like feeling super self-conscious. Like, mm -hmm. did you look the way that you thought yep. you did? Did he right. see what you were seeing? You know? It Are you going to up properly? Like, yes. Yeah. Like, and it's not that, <laughs> yeah, it's not that, uh, it's not that you want to be over edited and look a way that you actually don't appear, but Gary's really good. Like he doesn't over edit because I've had mm -hmm. photographers way over edit things to where I don't look like myself. Gary is the expert on yeah. pretty much just taking away any distraction um mm -hmm. from, you know when you look at a picture and there's there's something there you know that would draw the eye in a negative way he just simply takes that out so it's not that he's yeah. he doesn't his editing is, crazy is perfect yeah he doesn't go crazy with it yeah but he does it to where yeah i i look at that picture and i'm like damn i look good for the <laughs> yeah no that's a good point i, I know uh, me from my my viewpoint when 
as you guys can imagine, we get so many submissions from people daily uh, to be featured on the, on the implied uh, social media and uh, a piece of advice. In fact, I've got it on one of my quick replies, like, hey, oh, you know, when you, when you uh, over edit, mm -hmm. definitely not impressed. You know, when it, if, if you can make it look where it hasn't been edited, right. then yeah. those are the kind of photos that stand out. And not to say that I haven't posted uh, the rare one that makes it through just because the, the capture itself was just excellent. So I kind of overlooked that rule, but but for the most part, for those of y'all that are watching or listening, you know, photoshopping can be your worst enemy when it comes to being published. Right. You know, I, this, I'm yeah. saying that as as an editor that that goes through this. So that's a that's a very good point about that. Yeah. Well, it, and I I I read enough about editing before I as I got started that said everybody over edits in the beginning. And I said to myself, I'm not going to be the one that does that. Well, I was wrong because I over edited the over edited the crap out of the stuff in the beginning. <laughs> I'm I sorry, I, I got kicked out there. Yeah, I was I, about to look for you. Sorry, I'm back. I've had to learn <laughs> through each new step that I learn and try that I'm going to go too far with it, and I got to tone it back. And so I'm still learning to not overdo yeah. the editing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good point. And yeah. Going back to like what you were saying about learning and investing in yourself. I mean, I I, I still do it. I, I I despite me being the implied guy, everybody calls me that. Um, uh, I I will be the first one to say I'm not even the best photographer. You know, when when I first started, I would sneak in some photos of mine, not saying that it's from me. And and it was really more uh, uh, a confirmation that my my uh, my own photography met the standards that I set for myself for everybody else, and it was gratifying that of course it, that it, that it worked out. Um, uh, but my point with that being that you can never stop learning, you know. And there's no one that's the best because everybody's got a different style. I mean, each one of you ladies um, has. You know, of course, I've seen your pictures with Gary, which which are always excellent. But at the same time, I see your work with other photographers, which are equally excellent, but completely different styles. You know, mm -hmm. so um, you know everybody's got their own look. And so, as far as going back to the editing thing stuff, try different things. Try different uh, shoot different ways. Shoot with different lighting. Shoot uh, different angles. Just uh, some stuff. Um, like on my side, whenever I, I haven't shot in a long time because of COVID, but um, when I last time I did, I specifically would like let's say if I saw something on on Gary's work that I would try to emulate, I would literally just ask like I would ask Jamie, hey, let's go shoot. This is what I want to do, you know, and just go practice, mm -hmm. just go practice, yeah. and then work it out. Even if it sucks, at least you can say you you tried it mm -hmm. and and. It doesn't mean that you give up. You just keep keep at it. Mm -hmm. well, and, and the workshops too, especially like hosting them at my place. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a good and a bad side to that. I don't get to do as much shooting when I'm the host because I'm kind of concerned is everybody getting what they paid for, even though I'm not the one doing the workshop. But I they're at my place. I want them to have good stuff, good models, good shots. But I also watch all these different people shoot, and I learn new angles watching other photographers, new angles, new views, new vantage points at my own house. And that's one of the reasons I enjoy having some of that over there. So, oh, I never thought about doing it that way. Mm -hmm. and I, I, so I learn constantly, even from the people that are paying for the workshop. Well, I want to ask you, uh, especially you ladies, uh, along, uh, bringing up workshops, because that's – Obviously, there haven't been so many because of COVID, but that when it does come back, or from your past experience, um, for those that want to attend a, a photo camp, uh, you mentioned your glam camps. Um, what would be some of the pros uh, of any kind of, if, if somebody wants to attend a photo camp of any type, what would be your advice as far as what to look for and what to avoid? Victoria, I'll ask you that. Oh God. Um, so I've been to a ton of these, but specifically I try, one thing I do know is like 
going to different workshops over the years, I've learned certain things that I'm like, well, I don't want to do that at my workshop, like paparazzi stuff, like sitting, I, I can't, I can't focus whenever I've got five photographers shooting me all at once. Oh. That's just the, too much. Or, or like doing something that um, you're not comfortable with um, or, you know, what's your boundaries. Um, <clears throat> Structure is a huge thing for me because I feel like if there's no structure, then the girls aren't going to get ample time with the photographer that they want to work with. Mm -hmm. I was just at a workshop in Las Vegas where it was like there was no structure. And I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm going into this and I don't know who's who. So um, but pros um, of workshops, you're going to get exposure. You're going to get content, um, hopefully. <laughs> That's one yeah. thing um, is a con because you feel like, um, like what Amy said, are we going to get pictures back? That's such a huge thing for me. I'm like, I, I mean, if I'm posting every day, two to three times a day or something like that, I'm going to need content, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I got to ask because um, I, 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 that seems to be one of the most common complaints I hear from models about not getting photos back at these camps. I mean, is it really that bad? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm like I, I yeah, mean, it just are, really depends. Yeah, some of them are just so new. Uh, yeah. I, my opinion, some of them are so new that they're not confident in their work. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, some yeah. of them don't feel like they got Victoria Lauren content, so you just won't even get any of it. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't think that I think it's definitely in my experience, um, it's way more that than it is just them not wanting to send photos. Yeah, I think that yeah. they don't think they measure up with what's on your page. Right. So they right. Don't send it to you. But right. I'm like, no, I love that. Yeah. I love that photo. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Right. But well, you know what's funny is like a lot of these workshops though, like even the new people, I'm like, I get happy accidents all the time. And I'm like, I'm gonna post that, you know? Yeah. But you know, it just really I always go looking for like I just shot with a new photographer, I think three, four weeks ago in Dallas. And like, he blew, like he was literally shaking cause he was shooting me. And I was like, dude, I'm, I'm humble. You, you, you can, you can literally like not shake. I, I swear to God, I'm not that person. That's not going to give you a chance. Like I will yeah. let you do you be your creative. Cause that's just, I'm like, I'm a creative. I want other people to feel like they're comfortable around me. And that's this yeah. huge for me. Cause I want you to just be comfortable. Mm -hmm. Gary, I, um, I would assume that obviously you have a stable of of veterans that you that you work with now, but do you still work with newbies yourself? Ask Anya that. <laughs> okay, that, well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah, this guy yeah. pulls out the woodworks. <laughs> yeah, What's I'm like, okay, I have this new girl. We're bringing to the house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. When it, and like like the models that are looking for other photographers for different looks, different creative sides mm -hmm. to the photography. I'm looking for models with different looks. Mm -hmm. I went for the first year or two, and I don't want to say I was in a rut, but I was shooting the same rotation of models over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't growing, so I kind of ventured out, and then Amy and Victoria may have gotten a little mad at me or, or sent me a note that says, hey, you know, we're still here. But I shot with a young lady today. It was the second shoot. And I hadn't shot with her since right before Christmas last year. And she's a pretty girl. She mm -hmm. just, you know, what am I going to do with it? She's a pretty girl. I want good photos. She can pump out good photos. And so, yeah, she's fairly new at modeling. But why shouldn't I shoot her? She's pretty. I mean, and it's up to me to try to help bring out the glamour. She she was really prepared. She sent up a bunch of creative ideas, a bunch of photo or mood ideas. And 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 I said, I tell most of the girls this, don't go spend a bunch of money on wardrobe. It's not about the wardrobe. It's about you. It's mm -hmm. about your beauty. You know, it can be as simple as T-shirt and jeans. Yeah. You know, we can make that look good, but you know, some of these girls think they have to go out and spend tons of money. But when you get to a certain level, there are people that will send you tons of wardrobe. Yeah. And you don't have to buy it. But still it, it it's not the wardrobe that makes the picture. It's the beauty of the girl and that's where I try to go with it. And so I yeah, I look for new faces all the time. You give them a chance. 
just like we give photographers a chance. He'll give any girl that wants to <laughs> wants to give it a try. He'll give them not any girl, but <laughs> <laughs> pretty girls, right? <laughs> you taught me well, Anna Faye. I know <laughs> the ones that only the ones that benefit you, right? <laughs> How are you guys all dealing with, with the pandemic as far as shooting? Mm. Terry. I'll jump into that. I took two months off back in the spring. Mm. Postponed, pushed everything out. Still worried about some of the girls. I, I had a young lady and her husband come in from New York. Oh, wow. The they were scheduled to shoot May 1. We pushed it to the end of June. And she turned out to be a great find and her her account she's really grown and taken off yeah she's blown up yeah. <laughs> who's that missy. her name is missy ink yeah oh, yeah. M-I-S-S-Y okay. underscore i-n-k-e-d underscore oh missy ink oh yes i, I think i messaged her yeah missy ink. she and her husband are working on planning another trip to come back out mm -hmm. but you make it out twice and the third time i'll come to you yeah. and so yeah, so we had two months off, and then we had another hiccup in August, where August was an interesting month. It's my wife's birthday. It's our anniversary. We had planned a couple of weekend getaways, and that didn't get to happen. California was on fire, so we couldn't go out there, so we ended up in Destin, Florida. A lot of the stuff has been I've, – I've had two postponed times, and I'm just now kind of getting back into – the schedule of things and here come the holidays which i historically slow down because of all the activities and travel and family and all that kind of stuff right but yeah it it it, it screwed up my shoot schedule pretty good two what two times this year but i'm still shooting and trying to be particular making sure that i kind of know the type of people i'm shooting with some of the new ones they don't know that I'm checking them out from the other contacts we have to make sure they're not out just going crazy during this kind of environment. Right. Yeah. But I do some of background work on that. Yeah, I, I, that's a good point. I, I know uh, it's surprising to me how many people that I know are active uh, shooting, whether they're models or photographers, and then you see their story posts of what they're doing in real life, and I'm like, you're at the, this club pack. Nobody's wearing masks and stuff like that. I'm like, I doubt I'm going to shoot with you anytime soon. You know, it's <laughs> they need to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. We've had a couple of brushes with it. Uh, one model, another model was supposed to come out from New York, and she messaged me like two weeks and said, I just found out that my manicure girl tested positive, so we canceled the shoot. I mean, I think yeah. – Actually, the ones I'm booking with so far have been very upfront with me, and I with them. I had two brushes with it. One of my employees at work tested positive. Wow. Hopefully, the rest of the office, or rest of us, tested negative. We, you know, deep cleaned the office, fumigated, fogged, or whatever they do to, to deep sanitize. And then I was doing a simple little task in my backyard and had a little handyman guy helping me out. And he calls me the next morning and he goes, hey, one of the guys I work with just called me and said he tested positive. Yeah. It's like, oh, man. And so crazy. I waited a couple of days and he called me and said, okay, his test came back negative. So I didn't have to go get tested. But I had already started telling some of the people coming up, look, I may have to cancel. Depends on what happens. And so I try to watch it. But I, you know. I'm counting on some of the people. In fact, Nino canceled on me one time because his uh, ex-wife tested positive. And they've been trading kids back and forth, you know, on who mm -hmm. time of the week it was and that kind of stuff. And right. thankfully, she, no, she she'd been around somebody that tested positive. She tested negative, but Nino was still courteous enough to pass on the information. We postponed immediately. So part of it's communication and how well you trust the people you're working with. Yeah. Right. Ladies. I mean, I'm not a spring chicken, so I should be. I am concerned with it. Yeah, no, same here, same here. And I'm, I've got my two little ones, and and my primary babysitters are my parents. They're their grandparents. So, right. yeah. you know, uh, it's not a matter of whether. Uh, to me, it's not. It's not a political issue. It really is a, a health issue. I mean, you can't deny that it's that it's there. 
And I personally know at least two people that have passed away from it. So it's not a joke, you know, even if for those mm -hmm. that may have for some reason not been touched by it, they, you simply can't ignore that it's in the world right now. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. and anyway, and, and ladies, uh, you too. And, it's been just a lack of networking. We've kept it a lot smaller. So we've been mm -hmm. shooting with a smaller group of photographers. So it's been Gary Bond, the Taylor if image. A group. If a group. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been very <laughs> photographers and then we live under the same household. So we've mm -hmm. been able to put out a lot of content due to that. Um, yeah, we live with a photographer. And yeah, we live. <laughs> yeah, so that explains it, because you guys are always together. That's yeah. convenient. <laughs> it's been an upside, is that we have had three creative people in this house that we can continue right. to make content, because we aren't, we haven't been able to go to the workshops that we've, yeah usually done or those really big group shoots uh, to where you get a lot done in one day. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. It's just keeping the circle really small, way less travel. Yeah. 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 One of the models that was set to join us tonight, but did not make it home from her out of town venture this weekend. Uh, she's a medic for the army and that's part of her job is she doesn't do the COVID testing, but she does the processing of the test. And, mm -hmm. And she's constantly being tested because she's a little closer to it. And I'm not yeah. worried about her because she knows all the rules. Another one of the models that I have shot with, she's actually a nurse for an infectious disease doctor. Wow. And I don't mind shooting with her because she knows the protocol. Yeah. And so it, 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 it you know who you're shooting with. And sometimes right. I'm taking a little bit of a risk when I take shoot with somebody new i'm shooting with a a new girl in austin the next time i'm down there but she comes very well vetted from somebody i know quite well and he's very good friends with her mm -hmm. otherwise i wouldn't i don't know that i'd be shooting with her yeah well i'll jump in on it then um i did i have only shot with three photographers who are also i would consider three really close friends since this all started um, and I'm, I'm a mom. Uh, so, and I have two grandmothers that are still with us who are 96 and 86. So I'm, my parents like yours are my number, like number one and number two babysitters. My mom takes care of my one grandmother. So I can't like, there's no risking anything here. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I just, I don't do any kind of group stuff. I'll shoot one-on-one -on -one with a photographer. We'll get it going for a couple hours and then that's it. And hopefully we get enough content that I can that it'll make it last for for a while yeah. we've had to get um bold photo and i've had to get really creative with we went to like unique places so that we could at least change up the backdrop a ton you know what i mean like we found an old mill that was um defunct and abandoned and then we just changed up the backdrop so we could get tons of different photos mm -hmm. switch wardrobe and it looked like we had five different shoots that's like yeah. you have to get creative because right. i'm not Change gonna be out here on these streets in pittsburgh with all these people yep can't do it been there well, and, and shooting outside is your friend too if i understand yeah. some of the kind of stuff and and i tend to shoot a long lens most of the time when i'm outside when i'm inside you know i've got to go wider lenses it puts me closer to the model but Shooting outside has been somewhat of a an assistant from my perspective. Is like okay, so I can shoot a long lens. I don't have to be in the model's face. We don't really have to be that close. Yeah. And I we I try to respect that anyway. And that's part of the reason I shoot a long lens a lot of the time. So I'm not in the model's face all the time. Mm -hmm. But it 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 just trying to be respectful that way has has helped the distancing side. Yeah. Right. So <clears throat> on that note, I, uh, I did want to throw up some of your photos that you had sent me. Okay. So we can all kind of hey. critique them a little bit or not necessarily yeah. critique them, but, but just I like it. Let's appreciate them. It. Yeah. Let me go ahead and, and, um, I'm going to pick, uh, let's see here. And you know what, uh, I'm going to, uh, before I do this, I would just want to let all of our uh, viewers and podcast listeners 
again, if you're listening to us, normally we'll be on YouTube, but uh, for some reason it just wasn't working uh, for us to, today. But we will, I will be uploading this uh, to our YouTube channel uh, for for viewers, and um, and of course the audio from this show will be available on all the major podcast platforms, um, which. Thankfully, and thank you to all of our, our listeners out there. It's it's blowing up. By there's dozens of downloads every day now, and and we want to thank you guys. We want to thank our guests. Of course, our very first show with guests yes. here. All of you guys, Gary and you ladies. So thank you guys. Um, but since we weren't on YouTube, I'm going to have to go ahead and cut the live broadcast on Facebook now because I'm going to bring up these photos. But you will be able to go to our our YouTube. Uh, channel. Uh, the link will be on uh, our Facebook and all of our platforms. So you can go to this uh, easily by tomorrow, if not sooner, um, to ke- check out the uh, the photos on there, because obviously YouTube's will allow that kind of stuff as opposed to Facebook. We don't want to get, get in trouble. Um, and then for those of y'all that are listening to this on your podcast, then you will know that we always provide a Dropbox link to the photos that we will be talking about so you guys can pull them up and listen along while you're looking at the photos. So for right now, for all you Facebook people, we're gonna have to say goodbye. And for everybody else, we are going to go ahead and bring up some of these photos and you will be able to check them out later uh, through the Dropbox link that will be available in the show caption afterwards. So bye Facebook people, We are the show, the show is still going on. Hi. See you guys. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Yes. All right, now we are still recording. And now let's go ahead and bring up, um, I think the first one that stood out for me, let me go ahead and bring it up here. This is why I know it's Jess. I do not know who the other lady is. Let's see here. Gary, you let us know. Okay, that is Jess and Jess. Jess, (laughs) Jessica and Jessica. Both Texas models. Uh, Jess others that I first shot with July of last year. And the other Jessica is out of Houston. She came up to shoot with me, and it worked out that I thought Jess and Jess would be a cool girl-girl set. Mm-hmm. I agree. Interesting. Now, from a technical standpoint, and now everybody's got their own technique when it comes to this, but when it comes to backlighting, because obviously you've got a window in the back, how do you choose to light the ladies up front? That's ambient right there. I just raise the ISO and get a balance that I like. Okay. Okay. And so from there, if I don't get it quite where I want it, then the rest of it's done in Photoshop. All right. Let's just go ahead and scroll through the rest of these. Oh, okay. A little <laughs> behind the scenes shot. Yeah, he's having a beer with the selfie. That Jessica and Jessica again. In fact, there's a whole magazine out there with Jessica and Jessica in it. Just the squared. The same, same shoot, the same afternoon. These girls hit it off. They became friends. In fact, Jessica from Houston, the brunette, came up and spent the night with Jess Featherston before we shot that day. These are shot in Austin, Texas. For this from a different shoot? No, same shoot. Oh, same shoot. Okay. Oh. Same shoot. Yeah. Now I've got a question for Becca because obviously these these ladies um, have noticeable tattoos, and just from a bringing up that topic, how how difficult or not do you find it to find projects because of your tattoos? I so. A lot of photographers don't mind them. If they do, I try and keep my tattoos on this side of my body. Um, obviously, my chest tattoo. If they have a problem with my chest tattoo, that's very easy to cover up with uh, makeup. But if they don't want my sleeve in it, I just turn to this side for most of the photos, so that way they don't get the tattoo side. Um, 
And that's only come up a few times now. Usually they actually get excited about the tattoos. They want to photograph them, but it definitely has yeah. come up where someone's asked me to put makeup over it or um, just something like that. Uh, and it's present. So. Things have come a long way on right. that yeah. Since, yeah. since 15 plus years ago. Yeah, it was. That's, yeah. I mean, it's like, it's, it's shifted so much that I'm like proud of the industry because I remember I have this one tiny tattoo on my back and I remember someone telling yeah. them, we're never going to get signed with that. Yeah. And that's the like, second day. <laughs> that was like the question. That was the question. Yeah. Paul, are you, you know, uh, what's your age and do you have any tattoos? Like now mm -hmm. it, it's definitely more mainstream. Thank God yeah. we're able to express ourselves. The yeah. way that we want with our own body. I mean, imagine <laughs> signing a bunch of creative people and expecting them not to have ink on their body. It just doesn't right. Make sense. <laughs> not nowadays. Well, and yeah. I, I was modeling when I was younger, and I was uh, I was under eighteen, so I didn't have any tattoos. Um, now that I do freelance, though, and I can book my own things, and yeah, I'm not looking to get signed on again with an agency in the near yeah. future. That hasn't really popped up as a problem for me. Yep. Um, but I'm, I'm not at like a tattooed model level yet, in my opinion. I think I'd have to put more on my body if I wanted to get into like that realm, right. uh, yeah. which will probably happen. Yeah, <laughs> the goal is fully covered eventually, but. Good. It will happen, uh, yeah. <laughs> have you ladies had any issue with that before you, Sorry, you down here? No. no. I, I, I mean, with, I do get a lot of questions because if I, like where my birds are, I don't know what people are thinking or smoking, whatever. But like, they think they look like Grinch hands. And I'm just like, what is that supposed to mean? Like if I'm wearing a thong or something and they're like, it looks like this or whatever. And I'm like, now where did you get that? But you know, it's just it's just silly crap. It's nothing crazy. I get the, the common, what's that tattoo? And I'm just be like, it's sparrows, birds. it's birds. I don't even, I don't ever ask the question, do you have tattoos or not? It doesn't matter to me. Mm -mm. Uh, I have inked magazines that publish my stuff. I have, I haven't had anybody turn down a publication because of tattoos. So it doesn't. I bother. think I was one of our shots was an ink, and it's one where my sleeve is very visible in it. Nice. Um, yeah. And so, I yeah, like I said, most photographers don't mind it, and yeah. they won't even really yeah. bring it up. Some photographers they'll ask, "Can I take?" They'll have me do a shoot, a shot, and then they'll say, okay, now do the same pose, but flip it so I can take one with tattoos and one without. Um, so yes. You get both. Yes. Right. So yeah, some, that's both. reasonable. Yeah. Um, and so I'll have that happen sometimes. But like I said, I only have, I don't have like how Victoria was saying, she has the two on her hips. The only thing that I have that's sort of like that is the one on my chest, but that I can kind of easily cover up if needs to be. Other than that, everything's on this side of my body. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it's easy to kind of just rotate she gets, and she gets the best of both markets because I don't have <laughs> yeah. a lot of tattoos and I, I just want to be an ink I can either I can either look like a tattooed model or I cannot look right. like a tattooed model. Right. I am going to add to the whole um, now I am going to say that whenever I was published in Playboy they're a little bit more picky about that yeah. um, I just it's just who you end up being in a publication with I mean yeah. just like Becca said I mean inked that's just, you know, that's where it comes from. I mean, it's mainstream at this yeah. point. But Playboy's just definitely a little bit more picky. I used yep. to work at Hooters, and I had to cover up all my tattoos. So that sucked. And I had to wear a wig. Aren't there some swimsuit Whoa. competitions that won a lot of tattoos? Say it again. Aren't there some swimsuit competitions that will not allow tattoos? Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think... I'm not going to call it the name. It's only recently started allowing that so whenever i did the ibms thing that was i mean we all know how that all ended up i was there <laughs> oh yeah that's true i have that picture um but um also um i did swimsuit usa i, I didn't have any issues with that but um again we're in 2020 it's all mainstream at this point yeah. so you see girls that have crazy amount of tattoos and they're gorgeous. Yep. It's a non right. uh, if you, if you're okay. had noticed, we are on Gary's Instagram now. We see Anna there. I love that purple. Thank it's you. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Gary, Gary supplied that outfit. He yeah. was wardrobe for the day. <laughs> 
I we love that. that too. Yeah, he, he picked that out. And Becca's outfit. That's a fake piece of fur cloth. <laughs> yeah, we've done we've done some shoots with that one too. That photo just came out on the cover of Flip Fit Glam magazine, by the way. It just released Saturday. Nice. Congratulations. I love it. I think that's Anna's twin sister. That's right. That's Anna from Florida. <laughs> that is, that's Brianna, a fairly new one. There's Sarah. Mm -hmm. that, she's fairly new. I've only shot with her a couple of times. The one in the redhead, the strawberry blonde. Top, Top secret, you. babe. She uh, she's interesting. She comes up. She I've shot with her twice. Once in Austin, and then once she came to Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And she is killing the game. Yeah. Of Top secretness. That photo was recent, and actually, we were done with the shoot. And I hope I can say this on the air, but Becca's butt just kind of floated to the surface, and I just said, "Hold on." <laughs> I was sitting on the edge of the pool. We were talking because we were done. I'm going. Hold yeah. that right there, and that's what turned out. We were chatting, and then it became a picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just became it's a, a flotation device. <laughs> it was yeah. warm, warmer in the it, water. It was outside. So the whole shoot you had just done, 10 minutes of shooting, that's all irrelevant because she did this after you guys yep. were done. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when the good ones come out. Right. <laughs> uh, that's the first shoot with that model. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, we got some video here. A little, yeah, there you go. I've shot with her two or three times. She's an Oklahoma girl. Uh, her husband's a fireman. He comes with her. Is this uh, at your home? Yes. That's a first shoot. That's a newbie, yeah. Yeah. This was her first shoot, and she ever held. We, we were actually we actually did a small group this particular day, so Becca that and I got to to meet this girl, and she's one of those new girls that takes really good selfies. Uh, mm -hmm. So Gary was like, "We're gonna give this girl a shot," and she walked in and great movement. She knew holy how to cow, like, pose this really girl's gonna do amazing. Yeah, this girl's gonna do really good. Gary, you're great with bold colors. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like everyone goes with thing. just black. This is I love to see the color vary variations in here. You're great with bold colors. Thank you. I, that's kind of my mm -hmm. Instagram mode. I like it. Tell it, Anna. Tell them the story about your outfit. Those are five dollar <laughs> Clarence shirts from Forever Twenty One. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I like to hear. Yeah, yeah. That's fun. It's not, it's it's not, not even not. about the outfit. Nope. <laughs> We okay, I've got to say, like, Anna, like, you've you've got this sultry look, yes, not only in your photos, but, like, right now. Oh. <laughs> but, and Becca, I would not recognize you. Like, no, no. I was like, that's, that's Becca? I've been that's called amazing. a Just, chameleon. She is a chameleon. Because my, my looks on my Instagram page tend to vary a lot. She'll go from wearing black leather to a floral, like short dress. Wow. Everything works for her. She's one of those that wow. everything works for her. Yeah. yeah it, and something from the racket forever 21. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And <laughs> 20 different hairstyles. I mean, just, yeah, it changes a lot. The <laughs> length, the color does all the time. <laughs> right. This is a young lady that's going to be released in Playboy. Um, yeah. What are lifelong dreams? And we were able to make it happen. Nice. Okay, I need to get down to Oklahoma. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> also, one of my lifelong dreams, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Oklahoma. I know. I'll yes. happily go. I love that hair. Yeah, the yeah. colors are great. No, it's, her hair is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's all natural on her, too, by the way. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. There we go. There's there's that new girl killing it. Yeah, Gary, teamwork. Gary just digs them out of nowhere, and, and she's this girl's gonna do great. She really. I never would have known it was her first time. Another photographer, aftermath photography over there shooting her, so I did the video. Yeah, I'm just reflecting some lines there. 
<laughs> That's Brianna on her first time I shot with her there at my house. She came up to Oklahoma from Texas. Uh, the other photo you showed earlier was the second shoot in Austin. Mm -hmm. There, there she is. is. There she is. Such a pretty Thank girl. <laughs> Thank you. Gorgeous. I was so self-conscious of, of my makeup that day. It was like the first time that I ever paid someone to do my makeup. Yeah. So that I knew it was going to be good. But then she did like my eyebrows like in a way that I'd never done it. And like, I said hi to Gary, and then I was like, "Hey, before we start shooting, like, what do you think about my eyebrows?" And he was like, "They're fine, Liz." And I'm like, "Okay, fine." That's, that's good. Yeah. That's a good thing, yeah. though. Yeah, it was. It was just a, such a strange feeling. And then, of course, like Gary comes in for the save, and he's like, "You're good." Yeah. That was also the same shoot where I uh, pulled out this little blue, blue thing. He was like, "What's the next outfit?" And I'm like, "This little blue one. It's so cute." And he's like, "Liz." Puppies are cute. That's hot. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I've heard him say that a time or two. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Always learning. Love that. That's my pool. Yep. That's, I love it. That's my pool. And that's top yeah. yeah. All right. What do we got here? Tattoo. Where did the Where did the Bond girls thing come up from? Well, if you're old enough, like I am, you remember the, all the James Bond movies, and it, yeah, they had a they had a following for the Bond girls, and I had one publisher say, "Hey, why don't we start a series of magazines called Bond Girls?" Mm -hmm. And we just released issue number seven with six yeah. models in it. Mm -hmm. And the thing yeah. I like about this publisher is he gives each one of the models a cover, so they all the pictures I yeah. submit in every magazine but he'll put a cover for each model out and you can choose which which uh model you want it to, to buy yes that's nice speaking of bond we got rest in peace sean connery oh no. yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a sad day yeah that was super sad he's still there we go <gasps> hey that's me and, and my eyebrows again <laughs> great. You look good. You look great. Yeah. yeah. It's just the one shoot where I feel like I look significant it. younger, significantly younger. Yeah. And my husband's 14 years older than me. And then wow. I look younger here. And then he's like, babe, these pictures are fucking hot. And I'm like, I don't know how to feel about that. Like, that looks super young, Liz. Like, that's super young. <laughs> and he's like, okay, all right, we'll scroll. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, I love the shoe. She, she makes everything like, like that. She puts on something yeah. like, eh, and then she makes it. <laughs> yeah, I want to go back to that one. I really, this is one where your lighting is a little bit different from mm -hmm. normal, it seems. Highlighting those curls. Permission to speak freely? Of course. <sighs> I'm not a big fan of this photo. Really? I did not light it very well. To me, it's lopsided. Yeah. I'm criticizing my own work here. This is the perfectionist oh. coming out. <laughs> That's a very, very small bathroom in my house. It's the guest bathroom. I like the colors in there. I thought, okay, I'm going to bounce the light off the ceiling, but I don't like what it did to the upper left part of the photo. And I just, so I shot it again today and I did better. How's that? Wow. Gotcha. Well, I like the depth okay, that it gives. It. Yeah. Nudie. It's got for some nudie reason, to me, that photo feels lopsided, but I like Sarah's a great look. So if yeah. the photo's about Sarah, that's why I'm cropped in so close and she's most of the photo, which mm -hmm. is my style. I want the model at least 50% of the fill on the, on the photo. Gotcha. Good point. I it's just glamour. It's old school glamour style, is what it is to me. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Our door. Yeah. That's my twins. Twins. <laughs> Twinning. Aww. That girl is pure sweetness too. She, she was a joy. She handled it so well. I wrote her out of uh she's out of Florida and I wrote her out of nowhere. Um and I was like, you know, I'm just gonna throw this out there. I keep scrolling through Instagram and every now and again I'll see a shot of myself and I'm like, I never wore that outfit. Like and I <laughs> photographers that would tell me you know you look just like this girl that we know from florida so i reached out to her and i was like do you travel like how tall are you what do you weigh and like 
measurements are identical. Everything is everything. identical. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, <laughs> you have got to come to Oklahoma. And she was like, okay. And she was there within like a she, <laughs> two weeks. She came. It's amazing. Wow. You guys are a striking pair when you guys were together. Those photos yeah. really stand out. Yeah. 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 Thank you. That photo shot in my daughter's bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't mind though. No. Well, let's take just there they are. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> How crazy is wow. it? She shows up with the exact same outfits that I already have here at the house. That's and you hadn't worked that wow. out. No, no, we didn't pre plan nice. any of our outfits. She just showed me things that she had, and then I'm at my house. So I have I'm one of those girls, I have a lot of stuff accumulated through the years. So I was like, yeah. pull something out and I'll see what I have. And it, I mean. There were multiple outfits. So I was like, like three or four. Yeah, exactly. so we let Gary pick his favorites, what he liked. Do you guys have similar birthdays? Uh, mm, I, that's I don't know that about Anzi. I don't know her birthday. Oh. Uh, she's yeah. a, just a tiny hint, few years younger than me. Yeah, uh, a lot. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> I love Zodiac stuff. So I feel like there has to be some yeah. deeper reason why you guys have so many similarities. Yeah. She's mm. actually a doctor, very smart, educated girl. And we, wow. we all actually clicked. She gave me a back and, adjustment. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> my yeah. She's yeah. A it's my kind of shoe. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, whatever Zodiac she is. It's amazing. <laughs> <She's> yeah. <laughs> Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank for, you. For joining the show. We got Anna Faye. We've got Becca de Villiers, Zianya, uh, the Victoria Lauren, of course, my co host, Jamie Gaynor, and mm -hmm. the man himself, Gary Bond. Thank you for being our, our honored guest hey. today. Thank you for having me and hosting me. I appreciate it. Yes, this was so, great. Uh, again, for everybody watching, you'll uh, obviously you're watching this on YouTube, and we will have clips on Facebook as well. And of course, audio in its entirety will be on all the major uh, podcast platforms. We thank you guys all for your support. If you'd like to be a guest on our show, uh, whether you're a photographer, model, stylist, or whatever, uh, if you're part of the industry, feel free to uh, send us a message. We love to put you on the schedule, and and let's find the real people behind the the pictures. Yes. Thank, Thank you, everybody. For watching. Thank you so much for having me. I'll be following you on, all on Instagram within minutes. Yes. yes. We're going to be all right. Look for me. I'll be <laughs> Don't hang up, ladies. Okay. All right.